Nine months ago, I drastically changed my eating habits. Before, I was low on energy, I was skinny fat, and had brain fog every day. And I was told by some that this was part of getting older, but I was convinced otherwise. So I changed what and how I was eating, and I can't wait to tell you the results, because what's happened has been really quite life-changing. There's a lot to cover, so let's get straight into it. For many years, I did intermittent fasting and ate mostly a vegetarian diet. I classed myself as a meat avoider. Now, I eat a high protein diet with over 140 grams of protein coming from meat and I stopped intermittent fasting. This change in eating was recommended to me after a comprehensive blood test with clinical nutritionist Phil Richards, who identified I had some deficiencies which were causing me some health problems. And you can watch the video about the blood test and the problems that I was having up here. In this video, I'm gonna show you all of the meals that I eat in a week and talk you through the hows and the whys and show you the results that I've had. I'll also give you some nutritional tips and answer common questions about this plan along the way. I have my first meal around 8 a.m. after my morning workout. And on this particular week, I'm doing a strength training program. So the reps are between one and five reps. And my breakfast on a Monday is, are you ready for it? Cod, broccoli, and two eggs. <gasps> when I tell some people that I have broccoli for breakfast, they almost can't believe it. Before doing this plan, I was probably one of those people that would say broccoli for breakfast. In fact, I would skip breakfast completely because I was doing 16-8 intermittent fasting for eight years because I'd read lots of benefits about it. However, since then I've learned that fasting wasn't serving me well, so I've stopped and I'll explain why later on in the video. Coming back to this broccoli for breakfast. It may seem weird, I know, but when I think about it, it's only modern day society and marketing that's conditioned many of us that cereal or milk, coffee and toast is breakfast, yet those things have little to no nutritional value. Phil recommended I start my day with optimal protein, nutrient dense food, meaning high protein and plenty of vegetables. The protein would keep me full with little need to snack and no cravings, and the vegetable would give me plenty of nutrients. And the combination of the two would keep my blood sugar levels stable, which then had a positive effect on many things, not only is it good for fat loss, but it was also good for my energy and mood throughout the day. And since doing this plan, I've learned so much about how certain foods affect the body. And what I've learned is that the gut has certain receptors on, and these receptors detect nutrients in food, and they also detect if we're getting what we need from our food to function well. These receptors are searching for a variety of things, but in particular, they're looking for omega-3 fatty acids and amino acids, which are primarily found in meat and fish. When we get these nutrients, then it can help modulate hunger, which can then prevent snacks and cravings throughout the day, basically because we're giving our body what it needs to function well. So when we eat food with little to no nutrients, the body will continue wanting more food in order to get the nutrients it needs. Here we go. Presentation isn't my finest. This is absolutely gorgeous. So by eating this optimal protein nutrient dense meal plan, it's likely that we won't need to eat as much food in order to feel satiated. And this is where calories in, calories out, although it's important, it's not always as simple as it sounds. 500 calories of meat and vegetables will feel very different to 500 calories of potato chips. These receptors need satisfying and the only way that this can be done is getting the right nutrients through our food. That is just so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so delicious. There's so much to tell you, so let's move on to lunch. Lunch is around 12 p.m. and on a Monday, it's lamb steak, avocado, tomato, and red pepper. And at this stage, it's important for me to address that this video shows a lot of meat and fish, 
and my intention here isn't to offend anyone in any way. I understand that people have different needs and requirements when it comes to food. This video isn't me saying this is how everybody should eat, this is a video sharing how I eat based on my health goals. I cook all my meals in an air fryer. We got this a few months ago and it's made preparing meals so easy. These two bits of equipment, the air fryer and this steamer, they are an absolute game changer. I use these paper liner thingies in the drawers for two reasons. To stop the food touching the non-stick surface. I don't care what the manufacturer says about it being safe. I can't see a way that this chemical non-stick surface is good for the body. Using them also makes tidying up easier too. Another kitchen gadget I love is this baby food steamer and I'll show you that in Tuesday's meal. You'll notice as we go along, the meals have few carbohydrates, apart from what's in the fruits and vegetables. This plan has an average of about 35 grams of carbohydrates a day. So this is considered a low carbohydrate meal plan and this was only ever going to be a short term thing. Let me explain. After having my body composition measured at the start of this year, the results showed that I was skinny fat meaning I had low muscle mass and high body fat. So from the outside, I looked okay. But the inside was telling a different story. This test actually showed I was borderline malnourished because my muscle mass was so low. Malnourished, and I thought I was healthy. Being skinny fat may have led to things like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and osteoporosis, amongst other things. No thank you. For my health and enjoyment now, and in my later years, Feel recommended I focus on increasing my muscle mass and decreasing my body fat through exercise, food and supplementation. And I'll be making a video about my exercise plan and the supplements I take in separate videos. So keep an eye out for that on my channel. So this is the reason that my meals have been low carbohydrate in order to lose the excess body fat while still being able to gain muscle. Despite the low carbohydrates, my body was quite quick to adapt and I've had enough energy for my exercise and work in fact, I've had more. But this plan wasn't just focused on low carbohydrates, just as important was the high protein and nutrient dense food, which will hopefully make sense as we go along. And if you'd like to see all of the meals laid out on one sheet, along with the tips and the recipes and the information that I talk about in this video, you can download a template via the link in the description. I've also linked Phil's website in the description if you're interested in getting a custom food plan designed for you. Each meal keeps me going for about four hours and I find there's rarely a need to snack in between. Dinner is around 5.30 to 6 p.m. and I eat early because I sleep better as a result. This is why I'm so pleased that my dinner is already in the fridge because after a full day at work, I'm so tired <laughs> and I really don't want to make food. Today is chicken breast and homemade slaw. And when I first started this plan, I did weigh everything out because I wanted to know what the portion sizes look like. But now I've been doing it for nine months, I don't need to weigh it anymore. Somebody's heard the word chicken. Do you want some chicken? Charlie's got his own pot of chicken. The plan originally had shop-bought, low-calorie cold slaw on it, but I found the sugar in it was just too tasty. And one, I found it difficult to not just eat the whole tub. And two, it would give me a taste for sugar, which then gave me cravings for something sweet later on. And I'm one of them people that just functions better without sugar, because once I've had it, well, I'm all aboard the sugar train. Choo-choo! And that train travels fast, and once I'm on it, it's hard to get off. So instead of buying shop-bought coleslaw, I make my own in a big batch on a Sunday, ready for the rest of the week. I use cabbage, celery, red pepper, radish, fennel and red onion with fresh parsley and dress it with cider vinegar, olive oil and Dijon mustard. It's so delicious and full of goodness. And it's easy to make with a kitchen gadget like this that chops it all up. That's <laughs> your dinner, no knife and fork. No accompaniments, just a bowl of chicken. Charlie's got his, Mummy's got hers, and I've got mine. 
Over the months, I've got used to preparing food like this and the motivation is high to continue because it's making me feel so good. And at this stage, if you're thinking, well, LT, it's okay for you, you work from home, and it's easy for you to prepare all this food. Well, don't worry. If you work in an office, have travel days, work away, things like that, I've got you covered. I'll talk about how to navigate things like that later in the video. And if you have any other questions about this meal plan, please put them in the comments. By the time I get back from the gym, I am so hungry. Tuesday's breakfast is haddock and broccoli. <laughs> what do you want? And the good thing about Tuesday's breakfast is that I've already made my broccoli. I made that yesterday. So all I've got to do is cook my fish for 12 minutes. And that's it. And a quick tip before we move on to lunch. Get the most nutrients out of cruciferous vegetables by sprinkling mustard seeds on them and that increases the availability of sulfurophane. And even though sulfurophane may sound like an industrial window cleaner, it's a compound in vegetables that is excellent for the immune system. It's anti-inflammatory and has all kinds of health benefits to prevent disease. And this mustard seed trick is easy, affordable and tastes good too. And if you're still not convinced on this fish and vegetable breakfast, I encourage you to give it a go, just for a week. If you don't like fish, just go with chicken or turkey, or even steak, whatever, just get your protein in. I'll talk about the recommended daily amount of protein shortly, along with animal versus plant protein. Even my mum, she's 77, she's joined me on this meal plan. She ate a porridge, seeds, blueberries, and golden syrup breakfast for years, and has now replaced it with mackerel, a boiled egg, spinach, broccoli, and tomato. She has this every single morning and absolutely loves it. And we've both noticed an improvement in her health, body, energy, and cognition as a result. Although I'm no longer intermittent fasting, I'm still going for about 13 hours in between my dinner and breakfast because it's a schedule that works for me with my exercise, work, and sleep. So although I'm still going quite a long time without food, I'm now getting three protein-rich meals a day, which gives my body an opportunity to build and maintain muscle. And that's the goal here, to keep muscle mass high as we get older, in order to keep us strong and healthy and protect against disease and injuries. And that's the reason that I stopped intermittent fasting, because with 16 hours without food, and then with two low protein meals, my body wasn't getting what it needed in order to maintain my health. And when I had my blood test, it showed that my ghrelin levels were almost double what it should have been. Ghrelin is a hunger hormone, and because it was so high, it meant that I was always hungry, even when I was full up. I developed these weird eating habits where I felt hungry and full up at the same time. And this was because I was going for extended periods of time without eating. And this isn't me saying that fasting is bad. This is me saying that fasting isn't suited to me right now. Let's get back to this breakfast. I steam my vegetables al dente so it preserves the nutrients. I use this baby food steamer because it's easy. I just chuck the vegetables in, start the timer and forget about it. Plus it doesn't take up much space on the worktop. These are expensive, so I got this one from eBay. Often I cook my vegetables in batch so I can grab them from the fridge when I need. And another great way to get the most nutrients out of vegetables and other food is adding black pepper. The black pepper stimulates stomach acid, which then allows better absorption of the nutrients from the food. Magic. Tuesday's lunch is turkey steak, two eggs, avocado and hummus. Sometimes I read the meal plan and the meal doesn't excite me. I know that once it's on the plate, it's so delicious. The meal plan is the same each week. And one question I get asked is, do you get bored? Hopefully as we go along, you'll see that there's lots of variety in this meal plan. And the answer to the question is no. In the nine months that we've been doing this, we haven't got bored. The meals are too delicious and we feel too good doing it to get bored. 
And when I think about it, I suspect most people repeat the same meals throughout the week anyway. Something like cereal for breakfast, a sandwich and crisps for lunch, and then a proper meal for dinner. So it isn't much different. Reading this book, it is so good. There's lots of nutritional facts in here as well. I say that all the meals are delicious. Well, maybe not all. Tuesday's dinner doesn't fill me with delight. It's chicken and Brussels sprouts. Yeah. But bear with me on this, there is an explanation. Chicken and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> but it's always way nicer once it's actually on the plate and the way that I cook the Brussels is delicious. I bake the sprouts in the air fryer with olive oil, sea salt and paprika. 285 grams of sprouts is an absolute whopper amount, but I suspect I have this much because my blood test showed that I was low in folate, which was causing my red blood cells to become enlarged, which isn't a good thing. And Brussels sprouts are high in folate. It's a good job I like them. On paper, it sounds pretty awful, but in reality, it's delicious. Maybe because this has got a lot of what my body needs. Because the plan was designed for me around my blood test results, there's a stack of nutrients in this which feel included to fulfill my deficiencies. It's gonna be interesting getting my blood test done again in a few months to see if eating like this has actually made an improvement, which of course I will be making a video about. <laughs> totally unacceptable doing that. So delicious, every time, every meal. Do you want your chicken? <coughs> Gotta be the best time of the day. It's when we give Charlie is chicken <laughs> and it's he never used to get it before we started this eating plan. Phil, it's all thanks to you, even the cat is happy. My workout on Wednesday continues with strength training. And can we just take a moment to appreciate my new Vivo Barefoot Biome trainers? These are 3D printed trainers that were custom made for my feet. How cool is that? These are the first prototype that I'm testing and they'll be available soon. If you're keen to try barefoot style shoes, use code LAURATRY15 on the Vivo Barefoot website for a 15% discount. Wednesday's breakfast is salmon and cauliflower. Can you see the theme? Remember the mustard seeds? Whoa. Cauliflower's another one where people say, you eat cauliflower for breakfast. It's the way I roll and I've actually got tiny bit of cauliflower stuck to my face. Most of the vegetables I buy are organic. That's if they're available and I've got enough money. I'll talk about the cost of all this in a bit. It's heaven. And if you're unsure about it, I encourage you to just give it a try. Even if you don't do it on a work day, do it at the weekend when you've got a bit of time. Cook yourself some salmon, steam some cauliflower then let me know in the comments what you think. Since starting this plan, my relationship with food has changed. I used to make my vegetarian meals with so many ingredients, which isn't a bad thing, but it took a lot of time. Now I can make a meal with two to four ingredients, some herbs and spices, I whack it in the air fryer and the food is giving me what I need to function well and be healthy. It's quick, easy and doesn't take much tidying up and I enjoy it more than I've ever enjoyed food before because it's making me feel so good. I also realised that I used to use food for emotional support. For example, if I had a good day at work, then I'd use food as a reward. And on the flip side, if I needed a pick-me-up, then I'd use food as motivation. And these things aren't terrible, it's just that they weren't serving me well and I was making poor choices as a result. Now I'm eating food for fuel and health rather than basing it on how I feel or what I'm craving. I'm not saying I'm always 100% strict and on the plan, but I'm no longer basing what I eat on emotional decisions. Wednesday's lunch is ribeye steak, tomato, red pepper and mushrooms. How luxurious! With not many carbohydrates, this meal plan has given the results that were needed to burn the excess body fat that I had. But that's not been the only benefit. I was keen to actually see this fat burn in action. For the last three months, in preparation for this video, I've been using this Lumin device, which tells me if I'm burning fat or carbohydrates for fuel. In the past, I've used ketosis sticks, which I have to do this on, 
and a blood glucose and keto monitor, which meant pricking my finger. But with the Lumin, I just blow in this every morning and it tells me what my body is burning for energy. On this meal plan, it's mostly fat. What I've discovered is that when I'm in zone one or two, which is the fat burn zone, this gives me a steady blood glucose throughout the day, which then has a positive effect on so many other things. I have sustained energy and a stable mood. My concentration is on point, which then means productivity is good. So although I knew I was burning fat on this plan, using the Lumin has been a great tool for me to understand how food affects not just my body composition, but also my disposition. And if you don't want to hire somebody to write you a custom meal plan, then the Lumin app will even design a custom meal plan based on your goals and your daily readings. If you want to try Lumin, I've added a link to it in the description. Okay, lunch done. Kisses and cuddles with Charlie done. Back to work. Dinner on a Wednesday is chicken drumsticks with homemade guacamole, which is really easy to make. I roughly chop avocado, tomato and red onion and mix it with fresh lime juice. Delicious. Dinners are quick and easy to prepare, which is great because by the end of the day I'm tired. I hope you can see that eating like this has its benefits, but I also realise that it might not be easy for some people to do. So let's talk about what to do if you work in an office or you're on the road a lot, travel, holidays, things like that. I've been working from home for seven years. When doing this eating plan at home, it was pretty easy. However, since making this video, I've started renting an office. And now I'm working from here, and that's a video update for another time. When I first moved in, I thought, what am I gonna do about the meal plan? I really didn't wanna stop eating like this. So here's a few options. I bought an air fryer for work and chucked it in the staff kitchen. It's not a common thing to do, I know but it's also not mad crazy. You could do something similar, even split the cost of it with a few work colleagues who are keen to tidy up their eating. Or maybe you could convince your boss to get one in order to invest in the health and productivity of their staff. I bring my meals to work each day and cook them when I need. I have a little stash of dried herbs and spices in the work kitchen to jazz the meals up and it's great. And I'm convinced it's quicker than walking to the shop to buy a shitty sandwich. Before I got my air fryer at work, I used to prepare my meals the night before and then eat them cold the next day. And it wasn't as enjoyable as having them hot, but it was definitely better than getting a minging sandwich. For travel days, I either take my meals in a lunchbox and eat them cold, or I take some biltong and tinned fish with me. We're out shopping. I'm flagging, Mama T's going strong. It's not on the meal plan, but we're going for a high protein snack. M&S trout one for me one for mum and this has got 22 grams of protein in, in the underwear department and for the meals out on holidays it's pretty easy to get protein and vegetables from most places the only difficulty i find is getting enough protein and vegetables without it costing the earth all of this may or may not seem like a lot of effort but i found the effort totally worth it And just when you think that the fish and vegetable breakfast couldn't get any more interesting, although all of my first meals are my favorite, Thursday's one is so delicious. It's mackerel and cabbage, which sounds gross, but just stick with me. Cooking fresh mackerel in the air fryer is delicious. I bet the people I share the office kitchen with absolutely love me. And for the cabbage, I use my homemade slaw that I made in bulk. And that brings me to my next nutritional tip. I always knew eating vegetables was good, but I didn't realise how good, especially cruciferous vegetables. Absolute favourite breakfast. They're high in prebiotic fibre, which is great for the gut biome, and a healthy and diverse gut biome has a positive effect on mood, the immune system, and decreasing inflammation. And with the stomach being referred to as our second brain, the health of the gut is directly correlated to our mental health. Eat as much cruciferous vegetables as possible. How did I ever not have this? Thursday's lunch is lamb steak, tomato and red pepper. And dinner is tuna, three boiled eggs, homemade slaw and olives. No! 
As you can see, I'm eating a lot of protein. I'm having about 140 grams a day, which is all coming from meat and fish. So let's talk about what the ideal amount of protein is and also animal protein versus plant protein. The ideal amount of protein per day is 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight or one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And I'm on the upper end of that to reverse the borderline malnourishment that I had earlier this year. I cannot wait to tell you the results. Before this plan, I was probably eating around 60 grams of protein if I was lucky, which was all coming from plants. So let's talk about animal versus plant protein. In the past, I thought I could get my protein from plants. That's not impossible, but it does require a lot more planning because the protein in plants is one, locked within the structure of the plant, which makes it less available to the body, and two, plant protein is lacking in certain amino acids, which again, makes the protein from plants less available to the body. And this is the reason that there's so much meat and fish on my plan, in order for me to build and maintain muscle. And it's also the reason it's not an exclusive carnivore diet, because the vegetables are essential for many processes in the body. So for me, instead of arguing that it's the carnivore diet versus the plant-based diet, and it just seems so extreme to go one way or the other. Surely an eating plan like this is getting the best of both worlds. And I get that there are environmental issues around eating too much meat. That's one of the reasons that I never used to eat a lot of it. But there's so much to think about. And I know there's probably a lot of information in this video and all you wanted to see was the food that I eat. But this is important for me to explain why I'm eating like this and the complexities of certain eating plans. Before this plan, I used to have a hard time eating meat because when I did eat it, it just used to sit in my stomach for ages after and not make me feel very good. And it was only through having my blood test and my stool test that the results came back that I didn't have very much stomach acid. And that's the reason that the meat would just sit in my stomach. Hence the reason I avoided it. So Phil recommended I take HCL and pepsin and I took that for nine months and that sorted out the issue. I no longer take HCL and I can digest animal protein with no issues. I've also got a friend that has gout and has high uric acid, so he can't eat red meat. And so there's so much to navigate when it comes to food, which is why I'm such a fan of having a blood test because it shows what the body can and can't do and what foods it needs and what supplements it right, might need. And it just goes to show that one plan isn't a one size fits all and that people have different needs and requirements based on their goals and their individual biology. I could talk about this stuff for ages, but let's get back to the meal plan. Friday stays in the same theme as the other days. It's cod and broccoli for breakfast, turkey steak with cruciferous vegetables for lunch and chicken, a carrot and hummus for dinner. And because I can't buy a single organic carrot, I replace it with my homemade slaw. It's already made in the fridge and it is delicious with hummus. I'm only meant to have 15 grams, but I've put 40 on. Another question I get asked about this is, is there any fruit on the plan? Apart from the tomatoes and the avocado, which technically are fruit, no, there's no fruit on the plan. The vegetables are giving me what I need. Saying that, if I'm struggling, I may have an apple sometimes, but it's not on the plan. But also this no fruit, low carbohydrate thing, it was never a long-term thing. More details on that in a minute. Looked boring, tasted delicious. On Saturday, breakfast is salmon and cauliflower. 
Lunch is ribeye steak, tomato and hummus. We ate the whole thing, I can't believe it. Dinner is chicken, three eggs, tomato and red pepper, followed by Strictly Come Dancing, some crisps, fruit, dark chocolate and PLJ with sparkling water, which isn't on the plan. So from that, you can see that I'm not always 100% strict. I stick to it in the week and then I have a few other bits on a Saturday night. Although when I first started it, I was 100% strict and I stuck to it exactly because the results were so fast and so that just gave me motivation to stick to it. On occasions, we have some high protein natural yogurt with blueberries, wild, I know. And then sometimes we have these protein bars from Aldi. Oh my goodness. Don't even get me started on how tasty they are. But I keep those protein bars to the weekend. Otherwise I would just eat them until they come out my ears. I've got this little trick that if I get a sugar craving in the week, then I have this apple cider vinegar with blueberry and pomegranate. And I have it with sparkling water. And it's so delicious. And it knocks the sweet craving on the head. And I think apple cider vinegar is good for the gut too. And actually, this is rather exciting. So I've been on this meal plan for nine months and it's given the results that's needed. But just last week, the meal plan changed. So I'm staying fairly low carbohydrate in the week. But then at the weekend, it's going high carbohydrate and I get cheat meals, crazy. And there's some science attached to carb cycling and I'll include that in my 12 month update video that I'm gonna make next year. Sunday's breakfast is haddock, two poached eggs and broccoli. And I don't like poached eggs, so I do fried eggs. We recently replaced our non-stick Teflon pans with these non-toxic enamel pans, which are a dream. Lunch is lamb chops and cabbage. And I didn't like lamb before this plan, and now this is one of my favorite meals. I cut some fat off the lamb chops, fry it, then saute the cabbage in the lamb fat. I add some caraway seeds and fennel seeds. The chops go in the air fryer with fresh mint and thyme. It's unreal, so, so tasty. And all of the herbs and spice recommendations that I use, they're all in the template. I've recently learned that lamb is particularly good for body composition because it contains an amino acid called L-carnitine, which helps burn body fat, build muscle, and improve post-workout recovery. The week ends on a bang. Oh my goodness, my face is so red. Because we've been watching Beatrix Potter and both been crying our eyes out. Right, the final meal of the week. Are you ready for this? Prepare to get excited. It's chicken and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> all hail the foley, but this meal is never as bad as I think it's gonna be. So that's all the meals in the week and I cannot wait to share the results with you. But before I do that, you may be wondering how much I spend on food per week. It's crazy that I eat all of this. This all goes into my body in a week. When I first saw this plan, I'll admit, I was a bit nervous on how much this was gonna cost me. I rarely bought meat before because of the reasons I've already explained, but I also didn't buy it because of the cost. I spend around £80 per week on my food, which is about $98, and my mum spends about £60 a week, but she doesn't eat as much food as me. This may be a lot of money to some and not to others, but I suppose the general consensus is that this is a lot of money, and I would like it if it did cost less, However, from what I've experienced, it's totally worth it and I'm willing to make sacrifices elsewhere to make this work. As well, I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke or gamble. I rarely eat out and I'm seeing this as an investment in my future health. And I love the fact that this meal plan is the same each week. I don't get decision fatigue on what to have for my next meal. It's just all laid out for me. The spreadsheet. Quite proud of that spreadsheet. And the weekly food shop is easy because we buy exactly the same thing each week and no food goes to waste. At the start of the week, the fridge looks like this and at the end of the week, it looks like this. So what's been the results of me being on this optimal protein, nutrient dense plan for nine months? 
the results have been unreal. I've lost about four kilograms of body fat, gained about three kilograms of muscle. I have better energy, mood and cognition with no brain fog, which has had a positive effect on work, productivity and general day-to-day -day life. My skin has improved from all the oily fish and the half dozen fish capsules I take. My hair and nails grow so fast, I'm guessing that's because of the protein. I've got no more candida, which I had for 13 years. Maybe that was too much information. And although I haven't had my second blood test yet, I'm sure that my thyroid is working better because I no longer need to take a supplement for it. And honestly, I just feel like a brand new person. And these are the reasons that I'm gonna continue with a meal plan like this. I can't believe the improvement it's made to my health and my wellbeing. A quick reminder that you can download a template, all the information that I've covered, including the meal plan, the shopping list, and the recipes via the link in the description. Thanks very much for watching.